Hey, welcome back to New Zealand. In this episode of the car conversion project, I'm going to finally do something productive and disassemble the donor bike. The space I have to work with is super limited because our garage is tiny and we keep buying more motorcycles, but I'm going to make it work. I want to thank Tepco Cycle Repair for making an awesome video that goes step by step through this whole process. It was super helpful and I seriously would have been lost without it. They go through every single part you have to unplug and every bolt you have to take out. It's amazing, so definitely check out their channel. So when you buy Energica parts to convert something, they come in the form of a motorcycle that's already put together and you need to take it apart. If you're on a budget like me, it was a crash motorcycle with a questionable past. I can't really go into the details of how I got it, but let's just say it may have fallen off a truck in Italy and I may have sent the Mafia a whole bunch of money. But it's here now, so let's take it apart. I guess I didn't realize until now that the kickstand is actually bolted to the battery, so you have to take that off. What am I going to do with the kickstand once it's in the car? I don't know. Hopefully I can override this somehow so I don't need the actual physical kickstand in the car. But I'm labeling everything because by the time I get it all in the car, like 5 years from now, I'm not going to remember where any of this stuff goes. Part of the battery removal process is lifting the frame up off of it so you can slide the battery out. I don't have an engine hoist, but I do have a ladder and ratcheting straps. Basically the same thing, right? Nope, they're not. Don't do this. Actually, don't do anything I do in this video. Glad we got that out of the way. I had to take a trip to the hardware store to get a 12mm Allen socket for this next part. But that was a fun excuse to go for a drive in the beat. <laughs> now for the scary high voltage part. You have to unplug the battery cables from the controller, but I figured with the VCU already unplugged, nothing should have been running on the bike, and the key was out of the ignition, so it seemed safe enough. So the idea is to get everything out of the motorcycle, lay it all out on the floor to see what it does and learn how it all works, and then plug it all back in together so I have a full running system in my garage before I take the car apart. So I'm being responsible and not having like a car in pieces and also a bike in pieces at the same time. You know, I can do things in order. And then I can add whatever I need in the car to this harness instead of trying to make a hybrid mixture of both harnesses, like cutting up the car harness to fit with the bike. It's all about simplifying the spaghetti. Like I said, I don't know what I'm doing and I've never attempted something like this before, but my mentality is I'll try and do as much of this as I can myself. And when I get stuck, I'll just ask for help. I've met a lot of super smart and skilled people over the years, so I'm sure I'll be calling all of them for help soon. But this is also really fun. You know, taking stuff apart and learning how it was all put together. I think that's a lot of fun. The battery is the biggest, heaviest, hardest thing to get out, so I'm taking care of that first. It's being held in by three bolts. There are two at the back and one at the front. These are really long bolts. This is giving me a lot of ideas about how to mount it when it's in the car, but I'll get into that later. Once they were all removed, I asked Jen to come and make sure I didn't get crushed while trying to get the battery out. We kind of sound like minions at this speed. It turns out that tie downs actually aren't meant to lift anything. It says so right on the label. So I did the lifting and Jen tightened them as we went. As we lifted the frame higher, the clip-on started hitting the ladder, so we rotated those in and lifted the rest of the way. Look at that form. Another tricky part of using a ladder instead of an engine hoist was maneuvering the battery out. It just kept running into the ladder. That and my floor jack didn't have swivelly wheels on the front, so that was a huge pain. I really should have just rented an engine hoist, but you know how it goes. This project was already over budget. Alright, so we got the battery out. That was the hard part because it was the heaviest, craziest thing. Uh, it was just really awkward. But next, we need to get the motor out, the controller, charger, uh, and the radiator. There's like, there's a bunch of other little stuff to do, so this video is not over yet. Later that day, in internet time, which is really like a week later, I rolled the battery out of the way to give me some room to tackle the rest of the bike. Originally I planned on splitting this up into two videos, but why not just upload one huge 20 minute long ultimate donor bike teardown video? Yeah, I thought that was a good idea too. So I've been looking at this bike and I know it seems like a really complicated mess of spaghetti at the moment with all this wiring and stuff, but 
if you break it up into sections, it kind of makes more sense and it's easier to understand. Huh. Um, like charging. This whole area is charging, right? So AC charger. Hi, what? What's going on? Charging port. Um, you know, a lot of these, like, here's the fan for the charger. A lot of this wiring goes to that. And so you can kind of, like, just trace stuff. Hey, I'm trying to shoot a YouTube video here. <laughs> uh, you can just, like follow the wires and then label them you know like i've been labeling the crap out of everything uh controller like i still have to unplug a lot of this stuff um but yeah i'll just label it and then yeah motor i'm gonna take that out today somehow i'm not really sure how but i'm just labeling everything um battery label it you know just just in case you forget hey come here you so yeah, I'm just going to keep unplugging stuff and labeling it until there's nothing left to unplug or label. I started feeling a little bad that I was undoing what probably took lots of engineers hours to put together, routing all these cables, organizing everything to fit inside of a motorcycle frame. But I was having so much fun following wires and finding out where they went, learning more about what everything in the bike did and how it was all designed. It's like vehicular exploration. I don't know why I find this so much fun, and I can't wait to take everything out of the car. Okay, these are off and then this one, this one's loose. You can just pull that up through here. Oh, yeah, I'll just snip that actually. Snip. So this one's loose, these are off. This big DC one's off. So just this black one then. So where does that one go? This one. That one, that's it. All right, so I think this charging port should be free. Yeah. That'll go right. Yeah, that'll fit perfectly. Oh yeah, tons of room, just right there. Yeah, because this, that was not happening. <laughs> just one of these. I need to name these. I don't even know what they are. I'm gonna name you. Pablo. I could just look at the wiring diagram and actually find out what that is, but for now, Pablo. Pablo's will be reunited at some points. So this one that I found, this ground, is kind of confusing because I've, I retraced where it was, or, you know, followed it, and it just goes to another ground. So, like, maybe it was it has a little plug too so i'm wondering if it actually went somewhere i'll have to look in the wiring diagram and find out what it is if i ever do that i'll put it on the screen now and hopefully it wasn't important all right pablo the fan so that's what it was but since i already called it pablo luckily the charger is only held in by one bolt because I don't know, I don't know why, but it makes my job easy. It's part of buying a mystery bike, I guess, is that you don't really know the history, the history of the mystery. I just, just like that. Cool. A little charger, baby. <laughs> a little three kilowatts. So suddenly it's a whole lot simpler without the charger, because a lot of those wires and cables and stuff were just for the charger, and so, separate that part and now we can just focus on the motor and the controller and i mean there's like wiring to the dash and stuff um headlights other things that need to be unplugged but yeah pretty simple so now uh, maybe take off the subframe first i'll do that first yeah cool so upon further inspection the motor is kind of, it's bolted together with the frame and the swing arm. So if I take the motor out, everything just collapses. And so uh, I, I feel like this is definitely a job for the ladder, like suspending tie downs to hold the motor while I unbolt it. But I'm gonna take out the controller first because yeah, this seems like a, like a big final, like everything just falls apart situation. Cablagio Esato. Tabola numero 241. Uh, oh, due, I don't know. <laughs> I can't speak Italian. Uh, this means exact wiring board number 241. 
Um, I wonder if there's 241 boards in this bike or this is the 241th first, <laughs> 241st. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. This thing is just held on by Velcro, it looks like. But insanely strong Velcro. There you go. Awesome. Cool. Well, that's helpful. Now I can just use Velcro wherever I want on the car and just stick it places. What's going on here? Oh, there you go. That pops up. Right, okay. That explains it. <laughs> oh, there's another one down there. Cool. Don't forget to label them. All right, so everything is unplugged from the controller and it's ready to come out except these phase cables to the motor. So uh, these are labeled actually, so phase A, B, C, but the way they're arranged, it isn't A, B, C. It's like this one is B, so it's um, B, A, C, uh, and that's going to confuse the hell out of me once this is in the car and it's all like upside down, this will be mounted somewhere, I don't know. No, it'll probably be like this, but anyway. Uh, I'm just going to put my own labels on them and name them my own things. Phase A, B, and C. We've got Angelo, Bruno, and Carlo. Yeah. <laughs> take out all the cooling stuff um, without unplugging anything and draining the coolant. Let's see. Through here and then up. Let's see. This is really a job for two people just because of how heavy the controller is and how awkward the coolant lines were routing them up through the frame. But I just took my time. If I've learned anything from life that can be related to dismantling a motorcycle, try not to damage your hose. Oh, I did it. Oh, what was that? So there you have it. The controller, radiator, and I, I didn't unplug anything. I just kept it all sealed up and uh, only cut myself a few times. So <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, it's great. Looks like a little, a little rocket sled. So now it's even more simpler. I mean, like this is some wiring stuff that I need to really just move away from the motor because a lot of this stuff doesn't hook up to the motor at all. This is just the rest of the loom for the whole front part. Yeah, this is great. Ah, oh, okay. Where are my wire cutters? Um, do you see them? Oh yeah, here we go. Ha, hiding. <laughs> snip, snip. Be free. Mm-hmm. Fancy. Okay, where does this plug into? Everything loops around like crazy. Oh yeah, I want to unplug those too. I have no idea where I put these switches in the car, but I'm very excited to have all these options. Like, go through the menu and adjust like rider modes and regen. Yeah, so cool. Like I said, I don't know much about what happened to this bike, but something happened. Jen said I should use the turn signal indicator thing from the bike instead of the car. <laughs> That'd be cool. Okay, right. So let's trace this path. And this one goes into that one. So that's turn signal or, uh, you know, mode stuff. I found out there were actually two of these, so the little mode stuff as well was unplugged. And so now, yeah, I can just route this back through. The mode stuff is free. Hooray. Cool, good, nice. I'm starting to realize as I unplug more things and it gets simpler, uh, it only looks scary and daunting because there's a whole bunch of stuff, but as you unplug things and you're like, okay, that's the mode stuff, and then you take out like a whole big jumble of stuff that looked like a big confusing mess, but it was actually just one wire that was like looping around. Um, yeah, then it's, it's just really simple. So 
I'm excited because I'm learning where things go and what things do. And also I'm getting over my fear of um, complex spaghetti. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna unplug the dash just to keep it safe because I keep bashing it into stuff. Um, push this down and then pull. Yeah, sweet. Dash is out. Um, I'm gonna clean that up and put it somewhere safe. And yes, I'm, I'm shooting this on an iPhone, so <laughs> don't judge me. My big camera's battery died. So this is just gonna kinda sit like that, but a little bit further back so it'll be easier to see. But yeah, pretty sweet. The energy car is coming together. Sweet, right side switch taken off. Pew, 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 pew. Oh. Is free. And then there are two, um, I want to say like ABS kind of electronic things that I'll just unplug and then those will be free and the whole harness is, uh, I don't know, what the hell is that? Oh yeah, down here, there's another one. Um, and then everything else, everything is disconnected and I could just grab this whole harness and organize it, <laughs> uh, except for this. These go to the brake lever. There's this wire that hooks up to the brake lever, uh, which is, I think, for um, when you pull the brake in to start, it has to like, you have to do that to uh, trigger like a switch thing. I think, I think that's how it works. Um, I'll find out. Because <laughs> uh, if I can like, just get rid of all this stuff and just use this, like, these things as a little bypass switch that I just like hit a switch and then I press the ignition or start button or whatever then that'd be the way to go or just bypass it entirely and just hit the start we'll see that's a cool plug I want to say this is the final zip tie oh you suck <laughs> okay sweet All right, that was so satisfying. The frame hasn't been this empty since 2018. The whole harness is out, everything is labeled, and I feel like uh, I kind of understand a little bit more of this bike now. Hope you guys enjoyed the random garage time episode. Um, yeah, next time I'll, uh, I'll figure out what to do with the motor and I'll organize the wiring and clean up the rest of the mess in my garage. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.